This servo motor has been hanging out on the front of my lathe for three years now, and it is high time we did something about that. And I know, I know, I've said that before, but this time, I really mean it. Welcome back to Cloud42, I'm James. Well, for three years now, you've been seeing me working on the electronic lead screw project. And in fact, a couple thousand of you have bought the parts to put one on your own lathe. And in all of that time, I've seen lots of photos that people have sent me of really nice, clean, elegant installations on their lathes. Meanwhile, I've still got the test servo mount hanging out of the front of my lathe, so I can't close the cover and I can't even open the drawers without pulling the wires out of the way. So it's finally irritated me enough, we're finally gonna fix it today. I've got the servo motor here off of the lathe, and you can see this is just a standard NEMA 23 format servo. I did some testing of this in some previous videos, and it just bolts on the front with four M5 screws. So in order to mount this in the back of the lathe, I am going to need a motor mount plate. And I have one here that I 3D printed out of carbon fiber nylon. Now, if you think you remember that I did this once before, that's because I did this once before. And last time I used a material under the brand name Nylon X made by and uh, sold by Matter Hackers. And uh, what I found is that the plate was just too flexible. Under the weight of the motor, it sagged, it creeped, and it just was not gonna be workable. And I decided I was gonna come back later and make one out of aluminum. Well, I've been playing around with that Chidi Tech 3D printer that you saw in my last video, and one of the materials I've been playing with is another PA12 carbon fiber, and this is the, the Chidi Tech branded one. And what I found in playing with it is that it seemed quite a bit more rigid, so I decided to give this another try. So this is printed with 40% infill, four walls, and four top and bottom surfaces, and the part actually came right off the printer quite a bit more rigid. Oh, I also, um, made it eight and a half millimeters thick instead of the six millimeters I did last time. Nine is the absolute max I can fit where this needs to go. And I did one more thing. I've been reading a little bit about annealing nylon 3D prints. Now, it's not really annealing. Annealing is the word that's been attached to it. It's not the same thing as annealing hardened metals. But what it does do in theory is you heat the plastic up and let it soak at a high temperature for a while and the crystalline structure and the bonding between the layers changes. I put this between two plates of aluminum in the kitchen oven and brought it up to 80 degrees Celsius and let it sit for four or five hours and then turned off the oven and just let it cool overnight. And I was rewarded in the morning with a 3D print that is quite a bit more rigid. I'm pushing on this pretty hard and it's not really moving. Not much anyway. I did some testing with it in a vise with the weight of the motor on it and the amount of sag over the course of a week was nothing compared to what I saw before. Should be totally acceptable for this application. You'll see I also used M5 brass heat set threaded inserts which was another piece of feedback I got last time when I tried to tap them and found the material to be really soft. So we're gonna give this a try. Now, is this a good idea? Is this gonna work? I don't know. Let's try it and find out. This part will be very easy to swap out later if I decide that I need to make an aluminum one and I have to finally give up on the 3D printing. Now, ideally, to figure out where I wanna mount this, I would mount the motor mount onto the motor, I would loop the belt over it, I would put it on the other pulley, and I would move this around, get it in position, and mark where I need to drill and tap holes for this. The problem is that I also have to cut a notch in the backing plate for the motor to go through, so I can't actually get this into position with the motor on it. So I was thinking about this and I was taking some measurements. There aren't a lot of good reference surfaces and I realized this is a problem we can solve with 3D printing. And you all know that I love problems that can be solved with 3D printing. So what I did is I made this. And this is just a plate the size of the motor with a 3D printed pulley same as this pulley, in the correct position so that instead of putting the motor on the back of the plate, I can instead screw this on the front of the plate, loop my belt over that, and use it to position the, uh, position the motor mount. And then once the motor mount's in the correct position, uh, it's easy, I just take this off, put the motor back in its place, and we should be good to go. 
So let me, motor's gonna come in from that side, so I need to mount this on this side. Let me just screw this on, and then let's go over to the lathe and fit it up. Have I mentioned how much I like brass threaded inserts and 3D printed parts? I like brass threaded inserts and 3D printed parts. To the lathe. This is the end of the lathe, and yes, it is dark back here and terribly difficult to get enough light in here, but we will make do. Uh, this is the main three-phase drive motor with a three-step pulley and the same three pulleys up here on the spindle, so the belt to drive the spindle just goes up here. You can also run the belt up to this back gear using a cog belt behind it. There's actually a timing belt that you can put on here and then come from here to the main pulley that gives you more mechanical advantage. I'd really like to preserve the usage of that, but um, I haven't used it since I put the ELS on the lathe or since I put the BFD on the lathe. So the idea is this is the pulley that we need to transfer power to. So I'll put the belt on that Take my little mocked up jig here, put the belt around that, and then locate the position where this needs to go. Now you can see that this sticks out the front, this, this screw sticks out the front and is hitting this pulley. In practice, this will actually go behind this pulley, but uh, because this sticks out more than the motor will, I need to take this pulley off to make room. And that can be done. by pulling off this spring clip and pulling off the pulley. Actually, before I do that, I do wanna mark where that pulley is just so that I understand where it's gonna be when I put in my screw holes. So I'm just gonna use a Sharpie here and go around it and just make sure I know where it's gonna be. Now I can get back in here and see where this needs to go. I think that's about the height where I want it. And so I, what I need to do is mark where those holes are gonna go. And I already know how far up I can take it because I know how much space there is behind this. And I've come in here and made some marks. Previously, this is a mark that I made about a year ago where the belt, where the center of the belt would go so that I could try to track that. And then that was, that was before I came up with this idea, which I think is much better. Okay, so to mark this, I'm gonna put some, oh, it's oily. Wipe off as much of the oil as I can. There we go. Put some blue Sharpie in there. And we'll figure out where this needs to go and square it up with a square here. So right about that where it needs to go and I'll just use a transfer punch to scratch the center line of these screw holes. And that left me some nice bright marks so I can see where the screws need to go. So I wanna put the screws so they're outside of this circle but um, along those, so we have a good place. I may try to put in four screw holes. We'll see uh, how it all lines up. I know where my notch needs to be. Let me transfer one other line right here, which is the back of the frame of the lathe. And now I think we're ready to pull this plate off and go machine it. Now to get this plate off, there are two screws up here and there are two screws down here. And the exact position of this plate is actually going to determine the position of the door. So I'm just gonna scratch around the screws to make sure that I have a reference for locating them when I put it back on.
So I've got the plate off of the lathe and I have it over here on the mill and I have roughly marked out where we need to cut the notch and where the threaded holes need to go. And I've got this sitting on a couple of two, four, six blocks. And I will just make sure that I am completely clear of those blocks and then we will clamp it down. And I probably need to clamp it as close as I can to where we're actually gonna be milling, probably right here and maybe right here, just to try to get as much rigidity as possible through the point here where we're gonna mill. I'm gonna get in there as close as I can. I'm gonna tap it down. I'm gonna tighten it down a little bit. And then we'll come in with a dial indicator and line this up. Does it really matter? Probably not. Are we gonna do it anyway? Yes, we are. Get a little Randy Richard knocker here. Okay, that is close enough. This is not perfectly flat. This is just cut with a saw or plasma and ground out. That is close enough to square. This is actually the vertical surface that the door is hinged to. So that is going to be good enough. Let me just make sure this is all down nice and tight. And we can mill out this notch. Okay, the end mill I'm gonna use here is a YG1 tank power. This is a 3 8 roughing end mill. And I'm just gonna come in here and see if we can slot this out. Just see how it behaves. If it behaves well, we'll continue. If it doesn't, we won't. I'm go ahead and raise the knee here a little bit just to make the whole setup a little bit more rigid. Well, let's. Give it a shot. run a little bit faster, seems to be okay. Let's see if we can just slot this out. We're just about there. I think I'll just make one more pass around the outside and clean it up and we should be golden.
Well, I totally turned the crank the wrong way and put a little notch in that. I always do that. Anyway, it's good enough. Um, again, this is just clearance and uh, nobody's gonna see that. And do I wanna take just a little bit more material? I'm gonna take a little bit more material so that I can hide my mistake. Here we go. Evidence removed. Beautiful. Okay, let me grab a drill chuck and let's put in some holes. I've got my M6 by one uh, gun tap. So we should be able to just put this on slow and push it through. I did get a question on a previous video about what a gun tap is. And a gun tap is just another name for a spiral point tap. And a spiral point tap pushes the uh, swarf ahead of it out through the hole. And so you can put it in a machine and just run it straight through you don't have to back up to break the chips. So we're gonna put this in slow. And then I will just feed it and get ready to stop and reverse. Nice and simple, let's do the other ones. As long as we're right here, we might as well put a nice little uh, countersink just to deburr those edges. Okay, I think that's all we need. Let's do a little sanity check here. That looks like the screws will fit in the holes. And it looks like the motor is gonna clear the plate easily. Let me uh, run a file over this to deburr it and let's go put it back on the lathe. Okay, got the plate all cleaned up and I did do one other thing and I cut a little notch up here in the top just to make room for some cables to go through it. Now let's see if we can get this reattached. And that is about the position it was in. That should be good. I'm not gonna bother putting the tensioner or the big pulley back just now. I will throw those in the drawer and I will have them handy if I need them again. But for now, I think I'm just gonna keep this as simple as I can get it. I think I would like to have a little bit bigger washers than what I have on here, but I don't have any handy. I'll have to pick those up. I need to pull this pulley out just a little bit to align it. done with a scale.
there we go. Now I just need to connect the wires and this should be ready to run. And of course I need to put the cover back on. I'll go ahead and do that and let's give it a try. Okay, those screws were bothering me so I ran to the hardware store and bought some larger washers. I wasn't sure I was gonna actually have room to put four in and I don't, I've only got two. So unless I wanna clip these, which I totally could. Flattened one side. That will work. Now I'll go ahead and put the door back on it. Okay, I've got this pretty much all buttoned up. We got the belt coming through here from the servo we installed in the back. I went ahead and put the drive belt back on and I went ahead and put the idler and the uh, low gear uh, pulley back on there just so I didn't uh, lose them. I had a change of heart. So that should be it. Let's power it up, see if it works. If I turn the spindle, should see the motor down there turning and we do, this pulley is turning. Put it on forward, there it goes. And engage the half nut, and it's feeding. Try the other way. Okay, gonna call that a victory. And now I'm gonna do what I have been unable to do for three years and close the door on the side of the lathe. And since I don't have to get in here to mess with belts because I have a VFD and I don't have to get in here to mess with change gears because I have the electronic lead screw, I can just go ahead and put that screw in. And this is all buttoned up and ready to use. It's kind of weird with the cover on it. I haven't seen it with the cover on it in a long, long time. Well, see, I told you I was eventually gonna do it and I eventually got to it. And I'm really happy with how that servo fits in the back. Uh, I had planned to do that from the very beginning and I'm real happy. It just tucks back in there. The front of the machine is clean. I've got all the safety covers on it and closed and uh, that is a good deal. Well, that's all I have for you today. If you enjoyed the video, you know what to do. Give it a thumbs up, feel free to subscribe to the channel and leave me a comment. I'd like to know what you think. What kind of little silly projects do you have in your shop that you just keep almost getting to for years at a time? What projects have I started that you wish I would get back to that have gone years without making any progress? Let me know down in the comments. Thank you for watching.